Hey guys, Matt here. In my last video, I showed you, or rather let you listen to the clicking noise that was coming from the front left of my Volkswagen Golf R. If you missed that video, I'll have that linked in the top right hand corner. I was pretty sure based on the symptoms of this clicking noise that it was a bad CV axle. So today I'll be removing that CV axle and replacing it with a new one. So I've got the car up on the lift and we're gonna remove this wheel. And once you remove the wheel, you can see the axle bolt on the outside of the CV axle in the center of the hub. That is torqued on there to a very, very high specification. So I decided to hit that with some PB Blaster right away to let that soak in. And while that's soaking in, I can go ahead and remove the front half of the wheel well liner. These screws are T25 and they screw into some clip nuts on the back side of the liner and the other plastic trim underneath the vehicle. So now that the PB Blaster has had a little bit of time to penetrate that axle bolt, we're gonna have to remove that axle bolt. And to do this, we'll need to put the vehicle back down on the ground so that the weight of the vehicle will restrict that axle from spinning. I went ahead and popped out the center cap. This allows access to the axle bolt with the wheel mounted. Like I said, these axle bolts are torqued to a very high specification. So removing them is very difficult. My impact driver cannot deliver enough torque to remove those bolts. So I'm gonna be using a socket drive with a long pipe slipped over the end of it. And originally I thought this axle bolt would require a specialty socket, but in reality, it's just a 24 millimeter 12 point socket. So with that socket seated well on the axle bolt, I went ahead and removed it. And once it's cracked loose, I can blast it out with the pneumatic impact driver. Now I went ahead and put the car back in the air, took the wheel off, and we can start looking at the inside of the CV axle. The inside of the axle is mounted to the transmission with six triple square bolts and triple squares are not a common bit so if you do plan on working on a newer Volkswagen Audi or BMW you want to have a set of these I've got a link in the description that will take you to a set of these triple square bits I just use the impact driver to remove those but if you don't have access to an impact driver a socket or a breaker bar will remove these you'll just have to make sure to lock the axle which can be accomplished by putting a screwdriver or something into the veins of the brake rotor and that will restrict the rotor and the axle from spinning. And with the six triple square bolts out, the axle is technically free. It's just floating between the hub and the transmission. The outside of the CV axle has a spline that splines into the hub. We're going to need to disassemble some of the suspension components so that we can create enough clearance to pull the spline of the CV axle out of the hub and then enough clearance to actually remove the entire axle. This is as simple as removing the three 16 millimeter nuts that attach the lower control arm to the ball joint. And with
with those nuts removed, you can pull the lower control arm off of those ball joint studs. And at this point, the whole hub and brake assembly is essentially hanging on the strut and it's pivoting up at the top. It allows you enough movement to actually pull the hub out and push the CV axle in towards the transmission. This provides me enough clearance to remove the spline from the hub and then I can move the hub around to provide the clearance needed to remove the whole axle assembly. In the past when I've had issues with a CV joint, I generally take the axle and have it rebuilt so that I have the OEM axle in the vehicle. I was talking to my guy over at ECS Tuning. They had an axle that they seem to trust, so I went with that. I'll have a link to that in the description below. But as you can see, there's a lot of play in the outer CV joint, and that's most likely where our noises were coming from. So with the new axle, we can essentially install it in the reverse order of the disassembly process. We're going to want to fish that axle in between all the suspension components to get it back between the transmission and the hub, and then we've got to align that spline with the spline and the hub and push that, that in. And I actually had a difficult time getting these aligned and pressing the CV axle into the hub. And what I ended up doing was getting that spline started just enough where that axle bolt was long enough to grab on to the threads at the end of the axle. And then I used the axle bolt to essentially pull in the spline just by tightening up that axle. At that point, I had the outer spline fully seated in the hub and it was just a matter of replacing the six triple square bolts. And I do say replacing because it is specified that you should replace the inner bolts as well as that outer bolt. The outer bolt is extremely important because the amount of torque that's required for insulation is really high. So you're not gonna wanna have an old brittle bolt because if you shear that off, you're most likely gonna have to rebuild the axle. With the new bolts, we can tighten up the axle to the transmission. With those triple square bolts snugged up, I went ahead and grabbed a torque wrench and torqued them to spec. All the torque specs that I'm using are in the description below. So go down there and check those out. I went ahead and reinstalled the lower control arm onto that ball joint, torquing those to spec as well. Again, torque specs are in the description. And just like when we had to remove the axle bolt, we'll need to reinstall the wheel, drop the vehicle to install the axle bolt. As I've mentioned, all of the links to all the parts in this video are in the description. Huge thanks to ECS Tuning. If you do go through those links, it'll take you to ECS Tuning. If you go through those links and decide to purchase something at ECS Tuning, I get a small kickback from that purchase, which really helps keep this channel going, helps me create content for you guys.
So I went ahead and torqued that axle bolt to spec. Finally, we can torque the lugs to spec and pop the center cap back in, and this installation was complete. If you have any questions about my process for this, let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like more content similar to this, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.